Welcome to This Old App, a podcast about learning, coding, smashing stuff together, breaking things apart, startups, failing, winning, and any other buzzwords we can think of. Hey, Don. Um, this week, I wanted to discuss a Twitter thread that came up, and it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a topic that, you know, I feel like we've maybe covered a little bit in the past, but this was more of, I've seen people try to gatekeep development sure. by saying things about this, and I just thought it'd be a good topic. So it's a tweet by someone named Ben Hong, maybe, maybe it's B B E N H O N G, could maybe pronounce Wong, but we're going to go with Hong as it's spelled. And the his at Ben Code Zen, um, Z E N at the bot at the last part on Twitter, and mm-hmm. we'll put the link in the show notes. But basically, the tweet goes: Is it ideal to master vanilla JS before using a framework? Sure, but that's also like saying it's best to know how a car engine works before you drive a car. Life is rarely packaged so nicely. He says, "Take it out for a spin, build stuff, and have fun." So. The the devil's advocate side would, in my um, for me would say you need to know what you're working with. You need to know your tools. Um, but that's such a hypocritical stance because I made yeah. a, I've made a good amount of money over my career, not knowing even close to the expert level for half the things I tools I've used um, in web development and application development. So I sure. wanted to throw that out there to you. What's your opinion on using a framework without knowing how to use, uh, without being an expert in the base yeah. language? Yeah, for sure. So it's, um, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the, of the sentiment, build stuff and have fun. Um, when when I started to make this move into getting more and more into JavaScript, I, I was digging into uh, Eric Elliott's stuff and and Tony Alisea's stuff and and trying to learn the JavaScript part of it. Um, but that said, I'm, I'm nowhere near an expert. I, I, I I'm probably barely intermediate in in vanilla JavaScript, um, but in order to get anything significant built, you've got to use the framework. Um, and if you sit there and you take your time to, to learn vanilla JavaScript and, and become really good at it, you're, you're probably not, it, it, it's not real easy to build significant stuff. So you're, you're, you're going to lose interest. You're going to get frustrated. I think, Whereas if you follow a, a, a template to build something out in a, in a framework, um, you're going to get further along and then you're going to start to struggle. And that's when you dive in on the different pieces and figure it out. Yeah. That's, that's general statement. Um, is it, it's not necessarily scalable. Eventually you're gonna have to get in and, and dig deep on a lot of that stuff, but but yeah, I, I, I think you opened it perfectly by saying people try to gatekeep. And and this is one of those ways that people try to gatekeep, which is they say you got to learn the basics before you can have fun. Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, you don't watch you don't watch 20 hours of video or 40 hours of video before you go out and try and ride a skateboard um, or, or, or any kind of fun thing like that. You just go out and try and do it. Yeah, I mean, it's like... I mean, you, if you learn how to drive a, a truck, I mean, they used a car and an engine. And I, in, in, my, in our world, I'd compare it more to like driving a, a semi um, with a, you know, with a cargo. You may learn how to drive a truck, get it and back it up, um, park it, parallel park, a huge rig, drive, like know how to put the brakes on in an emergency weave through very narrow mm-hmm. corridors. Um, but you may not know how to open up the engine and fix it. I mean, that's why they have mechanics. Yeah. And a, mecha- and a mechanic of a truck may not know 
how to drive it. Like in terms of get around a corner, back it up. Um, So does that mean the mechanic sucks because he can't back the truck up? Probably not. I mean, he needs to know how an engine works and how the, the plumbing of that truck works to make it move forward and it fix a broken axle or whatever. But the person driving it, they can make an entire career without knowing how to fix that engine. Now, it would help them probably not to have to hire a mechanic every time they need to fix something. But you definitely can make a whole career on just being a driver, specializing in that. Um, yeah. Now, it's a little different with React because, like us using React as an example, you still need to utilize JavaScript to make a lot of your code work. Like it's giving you the framework sets up the the chassis for everything, but you're still going to likely need to know how to make a like write code today even. So right. so today I helped debug something on React with my coworker and she reached out to me and said I am using array.includes on a string, and I know that string is in the array. It is not working. It tells me false. And we went through, and we console logged it. I went and opened up a JS bin. I looked at the Mozilla documentation. It was working on the JS bin. It was not working in our code. Sure. And so I had to go into the browser, and I dug into the web dev console tools, and I looked at what it was getting rendered and I'm like, Oh, this is a nested array. This is not, we're, we're testing in a nested array, a string on a nested array, not the actual array we want. All we had to do is stick a zero in there in the brackets. And all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden we're using includes on the actual array we wanted. Right. So the JavaScript part helps us debug that little bit. I mean, in a way you might say an expert would not get caught with that, but I'm like, yeah, the, it just didn't look like we missed the double brackets around it, but we knew how we both knew JavaScript well enough to know this should be working. And if you didn't know an ounce of JavaScript, you'd get stuck right there. And so that's where it would make things inefficient. So I think the, the idea is, I mean, I, if we go back to in my career, I launched websites before I ever knew like um, uh, ASP C Sharp or VS or right. Visual Basic VB. I launched Drupal sites before knowing much PHP. I launched Rails applications before I knew Ruby very well. Right. I knew and I did a ton of jQuery and JavaScript uh, bootstrap and got paid for it and companies made money off my code before I really was able to dig in and really understand JavaScript before I sat right. down and I did the tutorials you talked about Tony Alisea on Udemy. And I also did the, you don't know JS by Kyle Simpson. Is yes, that his name? that's correct. I read that book series that helped me a lot. And then just the, pr- everything started to kind of gel um, react. I learned with uh, Steven Greider on Udemy sure. and just building, but I use, and I did view the same. Um, oh, actually view is different. View is different because I learned view after I knew JavaScript better. And I felt like I was triple speed on view compared to how long it took me to learn react. So, and, and I want to stop you there if I'm not interrupting your train of thought. No, go ahead. Yep. I, I think that's the point um, is the more, you know, of the base language, the more, you know, of the vanilla JavaScript, so to speak, the, the better you are at differentiating what you're uh, as far as what you're learning is part of the framework or as part of the language. So that learning goes faster because you're, 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 you're already aware of concepts. Now I would argue that learning react helped you learn view faster because they're, they're two shades of the same thing, doing them in different ways. 
Yeah. So your, your, your brain was able to put analogies together. Um, and I would argue that's, that's a point for learning frameworks. The more frameworks you at least take an interest in, the more analogies your brain can put together and go, I've seen this somewhere else. It was done yeah. this way. And now it's done this way. And, and you can make a rational, somewhat rational judgment of which way you like better. Um, I liked your point about, about the, um, your, your career. And I'm going to, I'm going to drill in on the, uh, I'm going to drill in on the Ruby and rails part. Yeah. How, how well did you know Ruby before uh, at all? I mean, do you feel you're good at Ruby or do you feel like you're good at rails flavored Ruby? I know I'm good at Ruby. I, okay. And now I am. We're, we're talking like 10 years later. When I so huh. the storyline for me in Ruby was I was I learned Drupal in PHP and I did not like it that much. Sure. I didn't I found it to be an inefficient content management system after you launched it and the users didn't like it and I didn't like working on the customizations, you know, just this is my opinion of how my yeah. experience went. So I was like, I everything that I'm feeling pain about, the Rails framework is addressing, and everyone that works in it talks about how much they love it. So I wanted to get into Rails. I took a job with a company, and they I was solo. I did not have a team to work with, that, like another developer. And so I was kind of winging it all the time. And so I basically learned how to do Rails before I learned Ruby very well. And I would just pick up Ruby as I launch things and then I get stuck and have to figure out Ruby to make this Rails thing work. So that's how it progressed for me. But over time, when I when then when I took a gig at with a bunch of other engineers better than me, it became very clear how they were much the reason they were better is that they understood Ruby. And I'm like, I need to know basics. So I backed up and started taking Ruby tutorials. Um and then I, if you were to make, if you were to say, Hey, you need to use Sinatra is the express server of Ruby, um, sure. very basic and takes in request response. You'd have to do all the rest. I could do a Sinatra app, um, without a problem. I understand Ruby well enough to do that. And I write little scripts in Ruby to like screen scrape recruits and fantasy sports and stuff sure so I, I still use like raw ruby but i i spent two years in rails productive getting paid for it without right understanding ruby very well so 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 you were able to take the framework use the framework be have a career in the framework yeah and then use that career in the framework to understand the underlying language better Yep. And I think that's exactly what we're saying is you, you, you've got to be engaged enough to, to dig in at the, the underpinnings of it. Um, I, I like your story because your story is a direct contrast to mine and, and it's, it's perfect. It's perfect to see the two sides. You, you didn't like Drupal and PHP because you came from .NET ASP. That's that, that sort of compiled stuff, correct? Yeah. And then you started to look at PHP Drupal, all of a sudden it's all scripted. You didn't like it as much. You found Ruby and Rails, which again is compiled. I'm the opposite. I came up with PHP. Mm -hmm. And then after we started talking and, and, and working together, I took a look at Ruby because I wanted to get on, on board with what you were doing. And, and Ruby and Rails, and I'm like, this just feels wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't match my brain where, where my brain is on all this. So then I, I slipped over much quicker into JavaScript stuff and, and found it more interesting because again, it's scripted. Um, I, it, there, there's just a different feel between the scripted languages and the compiled languages. So yeah. I mean, it, it, they're perfect the contrasts. The flip side of this is that I'm learning Go and I decided to learn Go before I learned fr any frameworks and stuff. Because when I took the gig at Hierology, they didn't tell me to learn Go. I mean, they, they said, you're going to be on this team. And I knew 
from talking to someone that Go is what they used. So I took it on myself to learn Go basics, Stephen Greider on Udemy again, and a, and a couple books before I started looking at the code they're using. And I would say there's le very, there's less handholding in the Go community. There's less of uh, frameworks that do the magic for you right. from what I can tell. Um, Go seems to be somewhat of a community that enjoys its gatekeeping. Um, sure. I find everyone to be cool in it. Like there's a lot of great libraries that you can use to get stuff going, but there's also this sense that there's this anti like Ruby is slow rails does too much magic. Um, the attitude seems to be, you should cut everything from scratch. That's just kind of the sense of the community I got. Sure. But, there are there is a full framework I just haven't used yet that I know I would do like you know try to utilize. Now the going back to the PHP Drupal thing, if Laravel had been available, yes, back when I was using Drupal, I have almost no doubt I would have kicked Drupal to the curb and taken up Laravel and stuck with PHP because I don't think PHP was ever the problem. Um, and I, people still utilize it. It still runs WordPress. It's a, it's a very productive language, but I just didn't, I didn't, I wanted what the rails community was doing. Yeah. And the Laravel folks took what we've learned from node and, and rails and moved it into the php community and that is everything i hear about it i know i would like laravel um, yeah and and that's exactly what taylor Otwell said as he said he, he he saw a lot of the de developer experience that rails was giving to ruby and he wanted to bring that to php yeah. um and I, i'm in complete agreement with you I wish Laravel had existed maybe two years earlier, and then I would have been a lot more into it. Um, by about the time it got to where it was popular or, or becoming known, I had already kind of transitioned out of PHP and Drupal. Now, I want to be fair to Drupal real quick. Um, Drupal is technically not just not a framework. It's just a content management system, so it's a little different. But yeah. Uh, that's just uh, uh, it, and and it it's a pain in the butt, but it it, <laughs> it does it does its stuff. Now, my path was before Drupal; it was Zoops, um, mm -hmm. which was uh, an, an even more primitive uh, content management system. Um, but yeah, what was uh, what, Co I think Code Igniter was the predecessor to like that was the first. Code Igniter was what was uh, what were the other PHP frameworks? Zend cake? something with Cake. Yeah, Cake PHP. Yeah, Zend was that yes. Z E N D? Yes. Correct. Um, Symphony. I don't know if Symphony. I, I don't know enough about Symphony because I know that just as I was getting out of the out of Drupal, Symphony and Drupal were were kind of partnering up to to yeah. bring a lot more Symphony into Drupal. But back to, we digress. Back uh, to the, so the we're, bigger we're, point. We're talking frameworks. We're talking, yeah. we didn't digress. Well, I know, but I'm, I guess, so if you're someone that's new, like what I try to tell my students always is, I'm teaching you JavaScript. Like we teach in the curriculum much more JavaScript basics than we would teach React. But... I would always tell my students, I go backwards. I learn the frame. If I'm going into a new world, I typically have learned the framework. Go is different because of timing. But if you were to say, what's a good one? I'd still go. If you were to say, Randy, I need you to work on Aspire EDU to help us with the problem. Are there devs or like not at not available to work and we have an emergency. So I would immediately go learn Django first before I would learn the oh, yeah. of, of Python. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Because you're I trying just, to solve a problem, you're not trying to learn the language. Yeah. yeah. And I've never had a client, I've never had a client 
or a boss go, are you an expert at JavaScript? Right. Because truly the boss, like every company I've ever gone to has said, do you know the framework we use? They've never asked about the, the, the deeper layer. They've never asked me about, do you know how this compiles on a computer? Do you know how the V8 engine works for JavaScript? Like, uh, I, like I don't know anything about what Chrome is really doing under the hood that well. Um, right. You know, like there's so many layers that are important for the whole story, but the only one that matters is the what gets delivered to my bosses. Is it maintainable? Is it on time? Does it work? Is it maintainable? Right. And so I just like I try not to put pressure on myself ever. Um, I need to know the ins and outs of this new language in order for me to move forward. So here's a here's the here's what will make me roll my eyes every time. I'll meet someone who is considers themselves a badass developer, right. and I don't know why this is. But almost always Haskell comes up. <laughs> almost always. I want to get into Haskell. I really like what Haskell had. I don't know jack about Haskell. All I know is it seems to me to be the beginning of every conversation where someone's trying to prove they're good at coding in a conversation is I really want to go down the Haskell path. And I don't know enough about it to know whether it's is the greatest next thing. Um, no one ever talks about, I've never worked, talked to a company that wanted to use it. Like they wanted to hire me to use it. I've never, of all the recruiters that come out and waste my time sending me job offers for things I'm not qualified for, none of them ask me if I know Haskell. Right. So I don't, I don't understand, I don't know why, people keep coming to me about, or it keeps coming up in conversations where people want to like show how badass they are, why Haskell is this thing that keeps coming up. But that's the only scenario it comes up in is someone talking to me about how they want to get into Haskell. Well, kind of like name dropping in amongst networkers, like, oh, I know so-and-so, they're a big deal. It's like, I know code, I want to be a Haskell developer and I'm just like, I don't know why I should care about Haskell, but yeah. And, and Haskell strikes me as uh, not, not the, the reason people are, or talk about Haskell is it's, it's supposedly a pure functional programming language. And, and supposedly we're all supposed to strive to be as functionally programmatically pure as we can be. But I rolled, my eyes, some, I rolled my eyes twice at that, I whatever tried, you just said. I tried to put as many <laughs> adjectives in there as I could. <laughs> Haskell strikes me as something that when you're in college for a computer science degree, they're going to teach you Haskell. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, when, when I went to college, now the colleges are probably better at it now. But when I went to college, we got Pascal, which nobody was using in a significant way. Um, Pascal was one of the main languages that we got. Now, fortunately, we also got C and COBOL, which I was able to go make a, the start of a career to. Um, hmm. But it, it was, here's, here's a language that does things, go learn it, what, a, a, as opposed to a language that, that matches um, the marketplace, so to speak. So what, one other... One other thing I want to bring up about the whole JavaScript question and learning the language uh, or, or the framework. JavaScript, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, JavaScript for the most part, that it first came out as a front end language or, or something to help on the front end of a website. That, that was yeah. kind of its origins. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me how knowing vanilla JavaScript was going to help you with Node or Express when it's doing something completely different than what the original JavaScript was. Um, it, it, because there are two different sets of JavaScript frameworks now, there's your front ends and your back ends. They're not different, though. 
Well, well, node is different than view. Well, yeah, yeah, but node is node is used for the build. The like on your machine, you use node for the what do you call it? The pack, the module, um, import, export. Like node is the basis for your build, for your tools to use to build. Um, node is the server side implementation of JavaScript. You can it is a, yeah. Run. It's a well, server side it, framework, right? It runs on a server. Yeah. If you're using it as a web server, it is the code that you utilize on a CPU to prop up like Express JS to do to do the server stuff you need. Right. But Node Where, itself, if you if you peel back the layers, Node is there to be mainly a module um man like a package management type of deal. Like NPM manages packages, but Node is the framework upon which everything else is sitting. On the front yeah, end, fair. it's not on the front end in the sense that Node is on the browser. It's that you're using Node to build what has to be sent to the browser. I think we're saying the same thing. Okay. Uh, what, 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 what I'm saying is if you learned your JavaScript early, and you're using mm -hmm. your jQuery and your Lodash and your all, all those frameworks, those early frameworks, and you're getting some vanilla JS in there as well. That yeah. was all front end focused. Okay. So mm -hmm. all the basic JavaScript you were using was driving that front end focus. Whereas if you're trying to use learn Node.js, there's a lot more going on with threading and all sorts of other stuff that you wouldn't have necessarily had any exposure to during those learning days. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's a different paradigm. So it, it, it that's that's what I was trying to drive at is it, you you almost have to learn the other part of the language that's driving that that server part of it. Um, mm -hmm. So it it's it's just different and and well one one place where learning the vanilla learning the I won't even see the basics but more the intermediate vanilla is when you're diving in and it's included all those modules and you're doing your stack trace and it's, you know, 10 modules deep and you're trying to piece together what the error is, yeah. maybe it helps you there. You're probably faster Googling what the problem is and somebody will say, oh yeah, you forgot to include this or do something, which if you had known the basics, you probably could have gotten there faster. But at the end of the day, we end up Googling a lot of our issues anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, I Googled that stuff today regarding the array issue. Like, why is oh, this yeah. array thing not working? And, of course, I didn't find the answer from that because we were just using the data, the array wrong. But I still Googled it to see, like, okay, do I know this syntax? Right. I thought I did. Um, and, I mean, JavaScript's more complex because you have the ES6 issue. Like they've they've yeah. now moved forward with ES six seven eight now I guess um, you've got different versions of it that are we're still in a way it's I guess what's really weird is we're all writing it in the new stuff but we're sending it to the browser as the old and Babel's helping us tr do that transpilation or whatever but it's not. It's kind of abnormal for most languages. Like usually when I write Ruby, I'm writing it in a modern up-to-date Ruby that sits on the server in the same version. But in JavaScript, I'm writing it ES6 and it's being put on the browser for compatibility at the very basic level still. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's just, that's different than most places, I think. Yeah, it is. And, and it, it's an interesting approach to version control. Um, JavaScript are, uh, is, is very open about where they're going, what they're evaluating, things like that. Um, to bring up a, a, an old friend that we were talking about earlier, Drupal had that issue as well, um, but they, yeah. they approached it differently. And they had their own struggles because of how they approached their version control. Um, JavaScript makes it a little easier in that you see something new and cool, you can go use it and then just transpile it back to the base with Babel. 
So yeah. that, that's actually a cool aspect of it. So the last point that I want to make is a conversation I have with a student who came up to me and they were all about learning, 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 which was great. But they were one, they asked me like, they, they said, I want to be, to build an app. I want to do a startup and I need to know, I'm going to learn all these things. They gave me like seven different languages and frameworks they were going to learn in theory in the next month or two before they would launch a startup. And they were like, which of these would you start with? And I just said, I wouldn't do any of that to do like your startup. Like you're talking about a business to run. You're talking about a product. But at the end of the day, you're one, only one person. Now, if you tell me you want to, if, if the goal is to learn, then I'll tell you where to start. But right. if your goal is to launch a product, there's a way more stuff you need to do for that than to be an expert in these languages because in all honesty, you're, it's going to be very difficult to run a business and be an expert in a, in a language. Like I am being given time by the company I work for Hierology, to learn more about go to become better with it because they have 30 other people on the team that can handle all sorts of other stuff. And if you are trying to do a startup or launch a product, the idea that you're going to be able to sit down daily and focus enough to learn, like to be a, a expert JavaScript person is a real, like you're not going to be afforded that time that hierology is giving me to be able to work with other people and to, you know, kind of fill my brain with new ghost stuff. So I guess my, my biggest point to, about this is becoming an expert is a goal in and of itself that is beside the point of using these frameworks. It is like you want to have a career as a JavaScript developer, become an expert. If you want to launch a product that needs JavaScript, I just don't, I don't think mixing yourself in as an expert makes sense. Um, at all. Like I would almost stay away from trying to become an expert. I would see what can you get done without doing that? What can you, what can the framework give you without being focused as a developer? Because your goal is a business, running a business and trying to launch a product. So in a way, I guess I'm even taking it further of, I, I feel like if you're on that path, becoming an expert is detrimental. Um, to being a good product launcher, to being a, a company owner in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. That's all I got for now. Yeah. I, 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 I think we, we covered this. Uh, it, at the end of the day, I, I, I want to go back to what we started with. Go build stuff, go have fun yeah. with it. Don't, don't worry about the, what the right thing is. Cause I can't tell you what the right thing is. The right thing is what's right for you. Um, not what, well, not what's right for Randy, not what's right for me, but what's right for, for each individual person. Um, yeah. so just go do it. And, and as you're working your way through it, you'll, you'll find the rhythm that works best for you. Some people will do significantly better by learning the basics first, and that's their learning style. And if that's the case, that's fine. It's just, it will probably take you a little longer to get to more significant projects. Um, if you go that route. Yep. And if you say anything to me about Haskell, I will start tuning you out immediately. That's if you say anything about Haskell to Randy, he's immediately going to judge you. That's what, <laughs> that's what he's saying. So. Unless, unless, unless you're going to pay me to build something in Haskell, and then I'm going to find look up Haskell frameworks. That's the first <laughs> thing I'm going to search for. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'll do it for the money, but I just got to, I'm not going to start with Haskell basics. I'm going to jump right into Haskell, like rail, Ruby, uh, um, Haskell on Hales, whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll talk cool. again soon. Later. Thanks for listening to this old app. 
Show notes and previous episodes can be found on our website at www.thisoldapp.online. Reviews on Apple iTunes are always appreciated and help promote the show. For questions, comments, or things you would like to hear on future shows, please email us at hello at thisoldapp.online. Show music is Guns Blazing by Fab Claxton, licensed by Pond5. Voiceover work by makingvoices.com. You'll hear from us soon.